Johannesburg is one of South Africa's biggest cities and one of its most troubled. Crime rates soared after apartheid came to an end 20 years ago, but the city still offers a wide range of unusual opportunities, especially for architects. Anna Graubner was born in Johannesburg. Her husband, Torsten Deckler, comes from Namibia. They studied in Europe under Zaha Hadid and Remkul Haas before opening their own company here, 2610 South Architects. The name stands for Johannesburg's latitude. There's a certain openness when it comes to relationships here. People want to come together in this country, and it makes you want to be a part of it. The possibilities you have here as an architect and the projects you can get involved in are simply unbelievable and really interesting. I lived in Germany for a year, and then another year in the Netherlands, and nobody ever mentioned people. But who are these architecture projects for then? For people. Cliptown lies in the oldest part of Soweto. The two architects wanted to work with residents to bring back a legendary part of the community, the Cinema Sans Souci, a community art centre. Their restoration project was awarded a special prize by the German architecture magazine Bauwelt. Singer Miriam Makeba and many others used to grace the stage at Sans Souci until they were forced into exile because of apartheid. You can see the remains of the old Sans Souci here. The ruins collapsed last year. But you can still make out the original structure. In the 1940s, what was once a stable became a cinema, dance and concert hall. It was also an important meeting place for black South Africans, mixed race couples and Soweto residents. The architects worked with their South African colleague Lindsay Bremner to draw up a plan to rebuild it. That used to be the stage and that was the projection room. We've left it open and just put in a floor in the mezzanine. So basically you walk from the old part into the new. The internationally known Vujani Dance Theatre Company would have liked to move out of its headquarters in central Johannesburg and into Cliptown. The contemporary dance troupe comes from the area and recruits dancers locally. But this video of a dance performance is all that's left of the Sans Souci revival project. The walls from the ruins are still standing. The renovation never materialized for financial reasons. But for a brief period, the beloved art center was alive again, hosting film screenings and discussions between the architects, artists and residents. Anna came with the idea of showing bioscope and the place was full of people. You can see that uh, they really enjoy it. And uh, they were also hoping that St. Susie bioscope is gonna be rebuilt again. That hope simply couldn't be realized. It was a loss for Cliptown's youth who had no art center and no prospects. I wouldn't say I'm discouraged. I'm still inspired by the project, even though it didn't end the way we wanted. But you can take what you've learned in this project and apply it to the next one. Like this one. A group called Trinity Sessions created this street art. It depicts the region's history, showing how black South Africans were pushed out of their ancestral districts during apartheid. After apartheid ended, everything was supposed to get better in Johannesburg. President Nelson Mandela promised a house for every black family. I make care that don't die with greed and red eyes, flexible and versatile and left with eight eyes. But without enough funding, those houses were very modest indeed. Rebuilding the neighborhoods presented a unique challenge for the 2610 South architects. But they came up with a better plan for the same money. Multi-story houses, built so they can be expanded easily in the future. Their vision has already been put into practice in the Lufering district. 
weil normalerweise die Häuser sehr, sehr The houses are usually very simple. So we tried to make the proportions a little nicer and fancier, with bigger windows and verandas in front of the house. More details, more colors, different types and styles of homes. A way to break through the monotony that has plagued Johannesburg's poor neighborhoods for so long. It's fulfilling to be an architect here. The houses look really simple, but it's the hardest thing we've ever done. We had to argue about things like the windows or a veranda just because of the cost. The next project hits closer to home. The couple are designing their own office and apartment. It will be the perfect setting for the architects to draw up new visions for South Africa's future. I think the biggest, the one